This rhyme is kind of a stretch, but I'll try it anyways. Use child perspective to make elements 3D. Now let's build daily interaction number 30. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? John with WebDev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Uh, today it's going to be a quick one. Uh, we're just going to have an image scale on hover. So this zoom effect when you hover over an image and we al we're also going to change the color for the image. Um, so this only takes a few steps, so it should be uh, fairly quick. Uh, so yeah, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's d dash the daily interaction number. So today is 30 and then the element. So every element on this website will have a D-30 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes and so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 30. So first we're going to yeah, add all the elements and then we'll add the scale on hover animation. So here I'll add an element, I'll add a section and I'll give this section the class name D-30 section. And for the height right down here, I'll set it to 100 VH so it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. So here I'll enter in 100 VH and then I'll scroll down to background and for the background I'll set it to black here for the background and I'll scroll up to display setting, set it to flex, set it to horizontal, uh, justify center and align center. So anything I place within this section will be in the center. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a wrapper. So here I'll add an element. I'll add a div block and I'll just call this D-30. Um, let's call it wrapper. Yeah, we'll just call it a wrapper because we're going to place three images inside of this wrapper. Um, so we are going to get a bit of practice with Flexbox um, as well as the on hover animation. Uh, but you can just you can apply the on hover animation to a single image or to, to any element. Uh, within the site, but I'm just going to put it in a wrapper for now. Uh, so here we have the wrapper. I'm going to set it to a width of 960 pixels and a height of 350 pixels. Um, then for the display setting, I'm going to set it to flex. So here I'm going to set it to justify start and I'm going to set it to align stretch so that any elements inside of it will stretch to the height of this wrapper. Uh, so the next thing I'll do is I'll add an element, I'll add a div block, and I'll call this D-30 image wrapper. Okay, and for this, I'm going to set it to a, this, uh, a flex setting of expand. Uh, because it's in a, a parent wrapper that has a flex setting applied to it, this div block is now a flex item. So I'm going to set it to expand, so it fills the entire parent element, which is the wrapper, and because the wrapper has a flex setting of uh, stretch, this div block stretches the entire height and we're setting it to expand so it fills the, the entire width or the available space within the parent element. Um, so here I'm gonna go to the navigator. Um, and actually before I do that, let's make sure, yeah, with the image wrapper selected, I'm gonna go down to position. I'm gonna set it to relative because we are gonna place an absolute position div inside of it. So I want this wrapper to be relative, so anything inside of it will be relative to it and not relative to some other parent element. So here for position, I'll set it to relative. Um, and I'm also gonna set the overflow to hidden because we're gonna place an absolute position div or the image is gonna be the absolute, absolute position div. And because we're gonna have it scale, I don't want it to be visible outside of this wrapper. All right, so that'll be a bit more clear in a second. Um, yeah, so there we go. We have the image wrapper and now I want to copy this three times. So we have three images So here with the image wrapper selected, I'm going to hit command C to copy and then paste Or yeah, and then select the wrapper because I'm going to paste it in the wrapper So yeah, hit command C on image wrapper then for the wrapper 
I'll paste uh, two more times so we have three image wrappers. All right. So the next thing I want to do is place the image inside of this image wrapper. So I'll select the first one here. Um, and notice they, they're all the same width. And that's because each of them is set to expand. So they're trying to fill the available space within the parent wrapper. So we have three uh, equal width uh, div blocks here. All right, so now I want to add another div block inside of this image wrapper. So I'll add an element. I'll add a div block and I'll call this d-30 image. So we're gonna place the image inside of this div block. And for this, I'm gonna set it to a position of absolute and I'm gonna set it to full so it fills the entire parent element, which is the image wrapper. So because we set the image wrapper to a position of relative, this uh, absolute position div is relative to the image wrapper. So it's filling the entire image wrapper because we set it to uh, absolute and full. All right, so for this image uh, or this div block, I'm gonna set a background image. So I'll choose a background image. And here I'll choose an image and I'll select this one here, set it to cover so it fills the entire div block. And I'll set the position to center. And for tile, I'll say none because I don't need it to be tiled. Let me see if I have another image here. Yeah, maybe this one, that one looks good. All right, so what I'll do now is paste this image into the other div block. So I'll hit Command C to copy, go into the next image wrapper and paste, and then the third one and paste. And then uh, for, yeah, for this one, um, I'm gonna give it a combo class of two and click on the image, replace the image, and I'll just select another image here. And then for this one, I'll give it a combo class of three and I'll replace the image. So we'll say something like, like this one. Uh, yeah, I kind of want this one in here. And actually, yeah, let me replace the image for this one because I want the darker image in the center. Getting a bit designy here, but um, yeah, we'll replace the image and we'll do, yeah, we'll do this one. Okay, that doesn't look bad. Okay, so we have the three images. Um, so let's look at the structure of the site so we can see what we're working with. So we have the wrapper. We set the wrapper to 960 pixels in width, 350 pixels in height. We gave it a display setting of justify start and align stretch. So horizontal justify start align stretch. We place the image wrappers inside of it. Um, so the image wrapper will be the same height as the, the wrapper and we set it to expand. So it fills the entire width of the parent element. We copied it three times. So we have three equal width uh, image wrappers. And then we uh, place an absolute position div inside of the image wrapper. Okay. So yeah, so here's the structure. We have the wrapper, image wrapper, and the image. All right, looks good. So the next thing we want to do is on hover, we want to, um, yeah, on hover, we want the image to become a full color and we want it to scale. So with the image selected, so I'm gonna select the first image uh, because the second and third image have a combo class um, and the first image doesn't. If I change any settings for the first image, it'll change the settings for the second and third, okay? But we don't wanna change it with the ones that have a combo class because only individual properties will get applied to the ones with combo classes, right? because um, yeah, the combo class is giving it its own properties. But here we'll select the first image, then I'll scroll down to filters, I'll add a filter, and the type I'll say uh, grayscale. Okay, so we notice all the images become grayscale, that's exactly what I want. And then um, for the states here, here where it says states, I'm gonna select hover. So when we hover over the image, we're going to remove the grayscale. So here where it says grayscale, I'll select the trash can symbol. So we don't have a grayscale. And uh, yeah, so if I hover over any of these images, the grayscale, it becomes full color. So make sure the hover is, is green here. So I selected it in states, I selected hover and remove the filter. So the next thing we wanna do is scale the image. So to do that, uh, we'll go to transforms with the hover state still, still selected. I'll click the plus to add a transform. I'll say scale and we'll scale it, let's say one, 1 1.2. So it gets a little bit larger. And make sure this lock is, yeah, that this is locked here. 
uh, so that the X and Y change at the same time and the image just grows larger, okay? And now if I hover and if I preview, we can see, and let me go back in here and for states go to none for the first one. And if I hover, we can see those images getting larger. Um, I do want some easing to this so it's not just a snap like that. So we can see if we hover, it just snaps. Um, I do want some easing, so what I can do is on the none state for the first image here. Yeah, I'm always working with the first image so it gets applied to the second and third. Um, so on the none state, I'm gonna go to transitions right here, click the stopwatch to add a transition. And for the transition, I'm gonna select um, all properties, the last one here. So scroll all the way down and select all properties. Um, and this is because we're affecting a filter and a scale. So I want them both to be affected or both to have an, have an easing. Um, so here I'll just select all properties. All right, and then for the duration, I'm gonna say, let's say 500 milliseconds. And then for the easing, we can select from these different easings here. We can say ease in, uh, ease out, or you know default here. Um, I'm gonna select ease and out. If you hover over, it tells you the name of each easing. Um, and you can adjust it here, I think, as well. So you can move it and set a custom easing as well. All right, but here I'll just leave it at ease and out, and let's see how that looks. So when I hover, we have a bit of easing to it. It looks nice. Uh, so now I'll preview, and I hover, we have that nice zoom effect, and the image is becoming full color. Um, and that's it. So yeah, again, we added a transition right down here, set it to all properties, set the duration, if you want it to be quicker, you can set it to something less than 500 milliseconds, and you can set the easing here as well. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for creating this, um, this interaction. We didn't use the interactions in uh, Webflow. We more use, yeah, we use more the, uh, the hover state, uh, which is very powerful and useful as well when working in Webflow. So the last thing I'll do is I'll select the image wrapper. Uh, let me remind you later. Uh, yeah, we'll select the image wrapper and for the margin, I'll add some left and right margin of something like maybe 20 pixels. So there's some space between the images. Um, so we have a nice kind of row of images. And I'll make the, uh, the scale a bit quicker just for demonstration purposes. Um, I'll set it to 250 milliseconds. So we have a quick snappy zoom. All right, and you could even go more with the zoom. So for the hover state, yeah, I'll select the hover state again, go back to the scale, and I could do something crazy like 1.5. So, you know, it's like really zooming. And then for the states, let me select none for the first one, and we have a really zoomed in image. Um, yeah, that's it. You could also, for the image, go down to the cursor and select a pointer so that uh, there's more of a pointer when the user hovers. Uh, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction number 30, the uh, the zoom, uh, the image zoom on hover. And yeah, looks good. So one thing or one of the important things to note is that uh, you can either start with the first image um, and then, you know, copy the second images. Yeah, start with the first image, apply all the effects and then copy and paste. Or if you have all the three images set, um, you would add the combo class, but make sure you're working with the the image that doesn't have a combo class so that it affects the ones that do have a combo class because the ones with a combo class have the d-30 image class applied to them. It, it does apply the it does apply it to the rest. But if you apply it to an image with a combo class, it won't apply it to the second or to the other ones. So the one without the combo class work with that one first. All right, looks good. So that is it for yeah, this daily interaction. And I'll go back here to the demo. Uh, looks good, yeah. So to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.